Hello folks, another video from the Angry uh, Crazy Photographer. I wanted to go over a uh, two-part in this uh, video and uh, hold tight with me. You should find it very interesting. There are going to be a series of these. This is video number one and uh, three photography hacks. And uh, when you watch these, you're going to think, oh, well, who, what pro would ever use this stuff and, uh, instead of, uh, you know, like professional gear? Well, there is no such thing as pro professional gear when it comes to photography. Well, there is, obviously, but ultimately it's all about the light. And uh, as uh, Picasso and uh, Galileo and uh, Da Vinci and others found out in the past that uh, there were other tools uh, for creating their art and craft and they found out what they were. You need to uh, discover some uh, interesting uh, tricks and hacks and uh, you don't have to spend a lot of money doing it and yet still get really professional results. I'm not meaning like, oh, cheesy results. No, I mean real genuine results and a lot of people will ask uh, how you got that shot. So. Uh, let's first talk about a rule and then we'll go over the hacks and uh, trust me this won't be a boring video at least I don't think you'll think it's boring it should be really fascinating and uh, you should like some of the neat stuff in it so we need to understand one thing that I came up with I thought up back in photography school it's one word called rats when we're talking about uh, photography and what it is you're trying to do. Ultimately, everything in photography is about, of course, it depends on the creativity in your mind, uh, transferring what is in your mind and putting it on the back of the image sensor. And that is by altering everything that you need to know. And it's not just aperture and shutter speed. It's everything around you in the scene that you're trying to create. Yeah, as a pink little stuffed bunny. Don't make too much fun of that. And what we're referring to is reflectance alteration, transmission, and subdue regarding the light in your scene. How you want to accomplish it and what it requires to achieve these four points. Reflectance of the light, alteration of the light, transmit, i.e. create the light, like I was talking about painting with uh, uh, fiber optics and various other devices, and subdue. Sometimes you have to dodge and burn in your photograph and uh, sometimes you might have some blown out backgrounds and what can you do other than obviously alter it in Photoshop really easy and simply. Uh, I need to be thinking about that. So that's rats. Reflectance, alteration, transmission, and subdue. So let's look at hack number one. Really simple. You should actually go down to your uh, local uh, hobby store and buy a sheet, a thin sheet of brass. They use these for all sorts of things at your hobby store. Just buy a sheet. Now, these are my favorite. Now you can make them out of black cardboard, but obviously they fray and they don't last as long and you can't get the really fine edges. So I can actually stick these. Takes up no room in uh, my camera bag if I know I'm going to do some special effects and what you do is shallow up the field, portrait, or whatever you have, the subject in your background all your little specular uh, lights that are coming in your city lights will actually take the shape of this so what I would do is I would actually have my subject for example right here and I would have this taped or velcroed you can actually make little tabs I just use a scotch tape on the front of a lens filter right here and uh, obviously you're focusing on your subject all the incoming light from the background will actually take the shape of this and here's my other favorite one you can experiment around this would be on the front your uh, subject matter um, will obviously be perfectly in focus everything there is not blocked as far as the subject but everything coming in will actually take the shape of this in the background same thing here I love this one this one is actually my favorite and people are like well, how did you get all those thousands of dots of light to uh, take on that attribute it's like oh look it took me about uh, 10 seconds to create this. This stuff you can actually cut with scissors by the way. It is just brass foil. It is about three times thicker than aluminum foil so you can like I say, you can cut these out of cardboard and you can make the uh, the edges just as sharp but they don't last as long. Uh, if these bend I just bend them back into place since it's metal. Really a really a great effect. Another one uh, kind of infamous from the back in the days of a penthouse um, is actually take a filter like this. Now other people will actually use a screw-on filter. 
on the front of their camera and actually smear some Vaseline on it. What I've done is, if you can see it here, I've actually smeared the entire lens except for a small window here. Most people make it circular. I make a little diamond shape so I can actually do this number. And what I do is I'll actually take the shot with one hand and I'll just hold this over the uh, existing lens or the existing filter. And uh, let me show you the effect from that. The effects is actually quite stunning. Uh, I actually uh, love it. And uh, God knows that uh, Penthouse and tons of other people, including tons and tons of professionals, have been getting away with it for years. Let me scroll down to now it depends on your ambient light, how pronounced it is, but obviously I can set these up for download for you. But uh, here you can see I have the Einstein light and uh, everything over here. I have nice soft focus. This is beautiful for portraits. I mean, you actually use this in 85mm 1.8 outdoors. People are like, oh God, Vaseline on the filter. Well, it's all about getting the right shot. I mean, if it makes a beautiful shot, it makes a beautiful shot. I mean, uh, depth of field is everything, but what about creating an abstract smear of the leaves and the background of your portrait shots? Um, you're doing an outdoor shot, and let's say there's heavy construction back here. This is a trick. This is something you haven't thought about that actually a lot of professional photographers will do is that they're in a beautiful location, but like the background, you know, there's Bubba with his ass crack hanging out, and he's about to climb into his bulldozer. But, you know, everything right here around the subject is gorgeous. It's like, well, I want this, and I love the light. Remember, you got to be looking for beautiful light. What defines you as a professional photographer is a master of composition and the light manipulation. And then it's back to our rats again, okay? Reflectance, alteration, transmission, and subdue. I want to subdue the bullshit in the background. I stick this right here. Okay, I've got my uh, shallow depth of field. I got uh, f2, f1.8, f1.4. God forbid f1.2. <laughs> Too thin, especially handheld. Okay, now Bubba is gone. Okay, he's been smeared up. As oh, what's that little yellow blob over there? It's so beautiful. Well, if I didn't have this here, you'd see Bubba with his ass crack hanging out on his tractor. Oh, this is such a beautiful portrait. Oh, this sucks. Uh, beautiful socks. So if you got some nasty background, just imagine it like uh, squint your eyes a little bit and defocus the background. It's like, oh my god, it's so beautiful. This is what it could look like if I actually smeared the lens with Vaseline. So you uh, just take a thin smear and you leave a little center portion right there. And the great thing I do about uh, using this is I don't actually mount it on the lens that way when I actually put it on the lens I can slide it around by hand so if my subject is over here and I want the composition of the shot to be like this since it's affixed to my lens I can't do this number by hand but if I have it on the front of my uh, my lens by hand I can actually slide it over it's like well I like this composition better so that way I don't have to crop the image I don't have to butcher the FX or DX image and it's go like okay I moved it over here boop there we go so now we get that. Let's move on to another hack. This is really, really good. You ought to try this. You know, this is just a junky filter. You know, and uh, who cares if it's not the best filter? I think it's like a Pro Master or something, but the only thing that needs to be in focus is your center subject. It's so useful, especially if you're taking portrait shots with crappy backgrounds. You're like, ha oh, ha 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 ha, smearing Vaseline on the lens. Well, not on the lens, obviously. On the filter, never on the lens. But this is really extremely useful. You'd be very shocked. Now you want to go in Photoshop and butcher the shot later. It's like, eh, blur, 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 blur. Okay, great. You want to do that? How about just getting it to begin with? Not so difficult. Now I ought to call this kitchen hacks because a lot of this stuff comes from the kitchen. By the way, like I said, you should use the, uh, the uh, brass sheets as a reflector. What you can do is uh, actually have your uh, main... Uh, your main speed light pointing at your subject like a macro shot and have the reflectance off the brass sheet over here doing fill over here that way it looks like sunset so you get that nice warm golden glow from the brass sheets here's another one that's my favorite and I'll show you the results in a second here I know you got some saran wrap, like I said this video ought to be called kitchen hacks saran wrap I uh, buy these little cheap metal lens hoods or whatever lens it is that I'm using I uh, wrap it around the lens hood Rubber band it. I use a Sharpie marker of various colors. Sometimes overlap. Okay, I uh, cut a little hole. I just poke my finger through. You don't want the hole to be very big. You want the hole to be 
about yay big so that your subject is right there. Some overlap is like, well, part of it's covering up the subject. So what? Does not make any difference? It doesn't have to be perfect. It's like, I've got the face. As long as the eyes are nice and clear, everything is all right. Even though this is covering up part of my subject right here. It's like, oh my god, this guy's using a pink stuff bunny rabbit for so. So what? It's about content, folks, right? Okay. Make sure that the eyes are not covered, so you can't be doing this number, okay? Eyes, always the eyes. Okay, there you go. So, what do the results look like? Wonderful. Um, you might think a Ziploc bag would work, but you actually can't poke a really good hole so that the outcome looks super awesome. And let me show you the image from that one. You'll think, oh my god, how could I use saran wrap to get anything that doesn't look like crap? Well, you'd be surprised. This is obviously an extremely boring shot, but the point is to translate what is there. Let me see. This is uh, actually, uh, that's one before I made the hole a little bit bigger. Here's one with a hole a little bit larger. You can change the effect. Just stick a bigger finger or your thumb through the hole. Remember, the hole shouldn't be big. Only thing that uh, is important is that uh, you keep the eyes nice and clear. There we go. Typical one like this. Obviously, this is like the most boring picture uh, imaginable. Not the shot. Let's talk about the effect. I mean, so you got to. You know, your uh, your child, and you're doing a sunset shot. To me, it takes you it takes you all of about ten seconds to set this up. Okay, saran wrap, rubber band, sharpie marker. Poke my finger through it, screw it on the front. Boom, 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 boom. Oh my God, that was so hard. Complex hacks of photo complex photography hacks. Another thing, doing uh, macro work, or if you want to get a water effect. Say I'm shooting uh, this subject. Um, and that has some reflectance, obviously a stuffed animal like this wouldn't, but let's say another object that has a, uh, has a uh, certain reflectance. Remember rats, reflectance, alteration, transmission, subdue. And uh, I want to get some water effects over here, or some scattered light effects. Okay, what do I do? Do I need a $30 beauty dish like this? Nope, all I need is some aluminum foil, and here's a spaghetti strainer. Not smooth aluminum foil, but yank yourself out of your sheet like this, crumble it up. That way you've got all these nice little reflectances. Undo the aluminum foil. I think you kind of see where I'm going with this. Okay, line your bowl. Doesn't have to be a spaghetti bowl, something lightweight. Okay, line it there. Stick it right here, speed light up here, boom, fill light right down here, out of the shot. Okay, don't have to be a $30 heavy throw beauty dish or something from Ellen Chrome or a Pulsy Buff. Talking about aluminum foil, you'd be surprised how many pros actually use aluminum foil for stuff. Uh, another thing, I said I would call this kitchen hacks. Let's put our cute little stuffed bunny rabbit up there. You're like, oh my god, he's crazy. Um, diffusion, if you're out in the fields, like, oh my god, I forgot my diffusion filter for my flesh. Okay, you gotta find some Kleenex or some toilet paper in the local bathroom, cover it over your flash, perfect white diffusion. Either that or a paper towel. Another thing, if you want a more permanent, better diffuser, if you got a milk jug like this, you're at a gasoline station, and you got a little milk, um, a little, uh, you know, soda pop size thing of milk with a translucent plastic like this, you know, gobble it down, cut it out, and tape one end over your flash. It is no different, no worse, 100% equal to the diffusion filter that goes on the front of your speed light. Cut out a milk carton like this. You got a speed light, it's like, oh, I want a diffusion filter. I'm going to go buy one for $30. No, just cut up your milk jug and do it, okay? So, remember to do this one. These are really awesome. Saran wrap, right? Aluminum foil. Kitchen hacks. Well, we're going to be a series of these, and these are really useful. Like I showed you, um, pros do use these. It's no BS. And uh, look, boring shot, but you get the point of what it does. Hope you like this video. More to come, and this will be a series on uh, photography hacks. Okay.